Hi and welcome to another Free Willis webisode. Today we have an up close and personal on the Hourglass Vanishing Stick Foundation. Always up there ahead of the times, aren't I? This foundation has been really raved about on YouTube and everywhere basically in the beauty community. I was really curious to try it for a long, long time. And I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, you should. Um, I posted about it. I have a friend that usually goes to the States or to Canada once or twice a year and I always have a huge list of stuff that isn't easily available in Portugal or that is extremely expensive uh, to buy within Europe. Whenever he goes there I just save up, narrow down that list and he brings me a couple of the things that I really want to try this was one of them. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Just gonna take my hair out of the way. I've already used this foundation uh, a few times. I have my opinions on it, but I'll wear this one as usual for the whole day. I'll do, I'll do check-ins. And also, as usual, I won't use anything like primers or anything that would change the performance of the foundation itself because I want you to see how it performs on me. Of course, this changes from person to person. I can't uh, disclaim enough that what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. Uh, just so you know, I'm 37 years old, so aging skin, uh, some uh, hormonal breakouts, and I have hyperpigmentation and um, basically combination skin, normal to combination, slightly uh, oily on the center area, slightly drier on the outskirts, but overall it feels more balanced in the summer and we're entering summer. This comes in a stick, it's a very creamy formula, it's a beautiful packaging, but you don't get a lot of product. Let me read the claims from their website. So this is technically called the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation Stick. Medium to full coverage, uh, good for sensitive, normal and dry skin, so uh, oily skins aren't uh, going to like this. A revolutionary foundation stick with the coverage of a concealer, the fluidity of a liquid and the weightlessness of a powder in a long wearing waterproof formula for undetectable full coverage. The unprecedented concentration of pigment in this foundation provides maximum coverage with minimum product, concealing all discoloration and imperfections for a flawless skin with a seamless finish. Double the amount of pigment versus traditional foundations. Long wearing waterproof formula provides 12 hour coverage. We're going to see about that. Innovative formula adjusts your body temperature to effortlessly blend into the skin. Available in 26 shades, which is really nice. It's vegan, cruelty free. That's amazing and should be the basic standard of every um, cosmetic company. Now, how to use it, prep with mineral veil primer, veil mineral primer, three dots on the chin, three dots on the tops of the cheekbones, three dots on the forehead, buff in to use as a concealer, dot three triangular dots under each eye and blend using a stippling and buffing motion, yada, yada, yada. You just adjust the coverage with the amount of dots that you do and I'm going to start with the um, recommended usage. So three triangular dots on the cheeks, three on the chin, and three on the forehead. And I'm going to use, where are you? A buffing brush. This is the Zoeva Defined Buffer. And I'm going to sort of blend this out. And I'm starting small. I have um, done my usual um, Skincare routine, there's no primer. I want to press this in, in more than I want to swirl it around, but I'll have to swirl it around. This is with the amount they recommend. This does not give full coverage. It gives you a sheer to medium coverage. Now I'm going to add a little bit more where I need coverage. So here on my scars, a bit more on my chin. I'm still using a literal amount. I don't need much on my forehead, so I'm going to leave it be and let's just blend this in.
And yeah, this would be my basic everyday coverage. It's sort of a medium coverage, that's what I go for usually. It's really easy to blend. It's creamy, but it doesn't feel extremely sticky or heavy on the skin at all. It feels really lightweight and it does look like skin. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to add a little bit extra. So, I've gone from the recommended amount, which I don't think gives full coverage at all if you have any sort of problem on your skin. If you have beautiful skin, of course, that will be more than enough. The next step that I did was to add the amount that I find is good for everyday use. But because I'm going to test this out today, I'm going to add a little bit extra coverage because I can still see some of my uh, hyperpigmentation. But first, let's see how it looks right now. This foundation sits on the skin beautifully. You can't really see it, you know, not even around the pores, even without a primer. Now some cream foundations, you, they can be uh, visible on top of the skin uh, and sometimes I like that and I need that for extra coverage but this without giving me that sort of finish on the skin still looks really awesome. So I'm adding a little bit more coverage where I have my scars. Actually my blemishes were quite well covered. I'm not going to use this as a concealer, I think it's a waste of product. I'm using the brush not only because they advise to use the brush but because I think that thicker formulas work well or better with um, a buffing brush of sorts um, than they would with uh, a sponge but to each their own and you can try several ways. As you know I like to keep my skin as clean and the good parts of my skin as exposed as possible so that it gives that optical illusion that I'm wearing less foundation or uh, hopefully would be no foundation. That can't be done <laughs> on my skin at least. And then just cover up the areas uh, that, need exp uh, that need some coverage and the fact that this is a stick makes it really easy. So this is it. Let's go into the up close. As you can see, it sits beautifully and seamlessly on the skin. I don't know how this is showing on camera. Maybe it's showing a little bit of a difference between my face and my neck. Uh, and it looks a bit yellow, but in real life, there's nothing there. And it looks absolutely flawless. And at the same time, it looks like there's nothing on the skin. Although I've applied quite a good amount of product on some areas at least. It has sort of a silky, satiny finish to it. It's not dewy, it's not matte, it's sort of your skin with a, a bit of moisturizer on it when it looks really nice. And it doesn't feel heavy at all. Uh, you can't, you can hardly feel anything on, on your skin. On the areas where I barely applied anything, there's nothing there. It seems like it's totally set. The areas where I've applied a little bit more just feel slightly more tacky, but you can take care of that with a tiny bit of powder. It's nothing to... Uh. It doesn't seem to oxidize on my skin, so it's true to color as far as my experience goes. So I'm going to do the rest of my makeup, apply a little bit of concealer. I'm going to do a very natural sort of face so that you can still see the foundation through it all and I'll be right back. It's 1.35 p.m. Yes, I'm late, <laughs> but I'm here. That's what matters. Yeah, this is my skin after finish. What have I done? I've applied a touch of concealer uh, and contour and a bit of a creamy concealer on this blemish here. So all the Creams blended beautifully, seamlessly, no problems. And I applied a little bit of powder to the center of my face, right on the sides of my nose, because it's really warm outside and I just don't want to be unfair to the foundation to that extreme either. And I've applied uh, a little bit of bronzer over the foundation directly. Because I have textured skin, this happens to me quite a lot. When I apply the foundation, any foundation, it looks beautiful, it looks like skin, but as soon as I set it with a tiny bit of powder, any sort of powder product, it feels like it loses its um, skin-like look. It starts to look a little bit more makeup-y, but that has to do with the texture on my skin. But yet, 
um, the powders blended, especially the, the bronzer, blended beautifully onto the foundation and didn't create any sort of um, weird patches, it didn't cling on to it, which is really nice if you don't like to apply a lot of powders and layer powders, you can go directly with a bronzer or whatever or a blusher on top of this uh, foundation and it won't be um, it won't look patchy or weird. The only downside that I've noticed is that it um, has creased a bit on my laugh lines. It's very normal for foundations to do that. It's unrealistic to expect it not to crease. The one that creases the least on me is Shiseido Synchro Skin. I don't know what sorcery is that, but within the normal creasing fact, facts of life of foundation, this one doesn't crease too much. It's a, just a little bit of sinking the product into the lines, but I can easily blend it out with my finger. It's nothing that enhances the wrinkles. It's just something that it's already there and it doesn't cover it up. You know what I mean? And it covered my active blemishes really nicely. It looks like skin. It doesn't look heavy or cakey on the skin and you can build up the coverage which is really useful. Up till now really satisfied with it. I'll go about my day and I'll be back for a check-in or maybe just late in the evening to show you how it went. So I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Here I am for an update. It is 4.49 so it's been about, I don't know, two and a half hours, almost three hours, and I'm looking a bit oily. Nothing too um, out of the, the ordinary for me, but I'm going to blot as I usually do. I like to make these things as uh, close to reality, uh, to the reality of my days as possible. What I find with this foundation is that um, when you blot it, quite a lot of pigment comes out, so if you don't set it with a powder all over, uh, it sort of starts to um, come off and it feels slightly oily all over, not oily, but slightly tacky. Yeah, but you can easily make it go back to normal uh, by blotting, just be aware that it will wear off if you're not using any sort of powder. It didn't crease more on the sides of my mouth, which is nice. And other than that, it still looks really light, nice. It do, it hasn't separated or anything. It doesn't look weird or powdery or cakey in any area. If you remember, I applied extra, a little bit extra coverage, both on areas of my skin that have scars that are pretty smooth, and on areas that have this, um, that have blemishes and breakouts, so texture. And I find that on those textured areas. It looks a bit slightly cakey, but nothing too terrible, nor enhancing any kind of dryness. But on the areas where it's smooth, it looks absolutely perfect, so that's a good thing. So I'm going to carry on with my day. I have to go out now for a meeting, and I'll see you later. <laughs> hey, so now it's 11.26 p.m., so the foundation has been on my face for over nine hours, I think. Um, I was resting my face on my hand, so this area has no foundation left. <laughs> yeah, it's not hand safe, you know. So uh, I can show you this side and the front section of my face so we can see how it held up. I was wearing my glasses, so that's why I have these marks here. And yeah, just for the sake of it, this side. So I had to blot this foundation uh, another two times and every single time more pigment came off and that's absolutely normal because this foundation is meant for normal to dry skin and my skin is borderline oily. So I was expecting that and from the previous experiences I've had, I think this foundation works brilliantly with a primer and and maybe some setting spray but if you're willing to sacrifice some of that it looks like skin truly madly like skin uh, effect that it has when you apply it you can always powder it down a little bit and it will hold up a little bit better and then again blotting and powdering will make it last longer than it has with nothing 
extra on my face. Who would I say this is for? I would say this is for people with normal, dry, even combination skin, as I said, using primer, setting with a setting spray, or uh, using maybe a little bit of powder throughout the day. Um, this is for all of those people who want seamless coverage. So this gives coverage, but it looks like nothing. And despite having creased a little bit at the beginning of the day, it hasn't deepened any of my uh, texture, my dryness. I have a little bit of my wrinkles are starting to show off here. This was an area that I've applied concealer and that I've powdered. It doesn't have to do with the foundation. The foundation itself doesn't enhance wrinkles other than that first moment where you can blot and that's that. And it doesn't enhance any texture. And even on my blemishes, as you've seen, it stays there and it doesn't enhance those sort of drier patches that sort of throughout the day start to develop. So I really think this is for those people who want to look like they have nothing on the skin but they need the insurance of a good coverage. And it's really good, handy for traveling. Downside is really expensive for the amount of product that this has. If you don't have that much of an amazing skin, if you have aging skin, problematic skin like I do, you will probably really like this foundation unless you're oily, actually oily. This will not be for you in that instance. This foundation, uh, aside with the Shiseido Synchro Skin, which is a very dear favorite of mine, would be my sort of everyday face foundations. Uh, depending on the weather and how my skin would be, is the hourglass as long lasting as it claims? Not without help, not without a primer and the powder, but still, it's not something that you can't sort out and not on oilier skins, but still, it stayed on really nicely and a lot better than I was expecting. I will link on in my blog posts the places where you can get it in the EU that have sort of. Um, international or at least EU shipping. I think we're done. This is the up close and personal for the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. It has a longer name, but I can't be bothered. Thank you for spending this little bit with me. If you want to spend more time with me, don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a few thumbs up down below. Show me your love. Share your experiences with this foundation and other Hourglass products uh, on the comments down below so that we can all read and see if those recommendations suit us and uh, yeah thank you for being there and i'll see you on my next video bye i forget what i'm saying i'm so sleepy